Hello and welcome everybody to this new video about Cataclysm the Roguelike. It has been one year since I uh, posted my last video, so let's see what has changed in this one year time. As you can see, some of my videos uh, got rejected because they were too long, but luckily, since I had enough views since then, since one year ago, I can now upload longer videos. Now, the first thing that has happened with Cataclysm is that apparently the developer is no longer, uh, well, the creator of the game is no longer the main developer. So he's on an indefinite hiatus uh, from Cataclysm, will return eventually, in one form or another, and uh, he's working on another roguelike, so it would be interesting to see what that would be. So in the meanwhile, you know, um, if you go to the website, you will not find any information about what's happening. So you will just get the same website that we saw one year ago, and there is actually no information. But then if you go to community, you have the forum and the wiki. Let's go to the wiki. On the first site, also, nothing is referencing to the change, but if you, uh, there is actually one line here, if you look closely that refers to uh, a new version called Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. If you go to the forum, to uh, modding, then there will be a thread about Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. So there will be nothing on the main forum. So if you go to the you know, gameplay forum or whatever, you will find no information about you know what's going on. It, it, you know, it might even appear that uh, it's still actively being developed. However, if you download and install the game as it is right now, on um, February 13, 2013, you will find a lot of bugs. So, so you might wonder, you know, what's going on? Is this project still being developed? And then you can find that actually there is a new website for the game, a new website, a new forum, a new, um, actually also a new IRC channel. And this version of of the game, this this fork of the game, has actually less bugs right now than the original. So, I strongly recommend that you actually, if you pl want to play Cataclysm again, that you go straight to this website, um, cataclysm .griff com and that you just uh, download and install this version of the game. So that's a pretty long introduction. So let's see, let's have a look at the actual game. So um, we're gonna start a new game and um, I'm gonna use a preset character. I'm gonna explain a bit about it. This is my survivor character. Now, now why is this a survivor character? Well, first of all, well, the thing I used to do is go max intelligence, so I would have 20 intelligence or whatever but no longer you know I I take uh, some bad trades these are some uh, trades that are not too bad but these are important you know the good trades fleet footed and quick they both actually increase your running speed this will allow you to even outrun wolves and that's pretty good because wolves are pretty fast and speed is basically everything because if you can run away from something then you can survive However, if you know if you slow down in the game, and you get swarmed by a lot of uh, zombies, then you, you're basically dead. There are other ways to die, but getting slowed down is the most important uh, reason why you could die. I also have light step and night vision. These are just convenience, you know, because stealth is kind of important for survival. Stealth is important. Run speed is important and this night vision just gives you a strong tactical advantage that you can abuse so everything to survive uh, 14 intelligence just because it's uh, very handy to install bionics and reading books and you know gaining experience and dexterity why why did i choose dexterity in the past i only got strength and perception perception to have more range damage and strength to get more hit points well I hope that dexterity is going to help me block and dodge a little bit more. So, dodging and blocking is, of course, essential if you want to survive and not get damaged and not get slowed down. So, speed, dodginess, and um, some uh, tactical. Uh, 
bonuses. I think that's pretty strong, so let's check out and let's start a new game. Whoa, this is special. I mean an evac shelter that's actually just the forest. Without any stairs, probably. That sounds like a bug to me. Okay. <laughs> so we're just gonna delete that. Oops. And um, presets. All right. Let's go. Okay, so what else has changed? Well, first of all, military outposts. Uh, these are actually guarded by turrets, so you might not want to go straight into these. The old military bunkers, which still exists, by the way, um, you, if you have a military ID card, you could just enter them, you could just have access to these weapons, and it would be 100% safe. These military outposts, they're different, and they're not safe, so unless you have the right weapons and stuff, don't go there. The second thing that's new is vehicles. Uh, vehicles are pretty awesome actually. Another thing that's uh, somewhat new is these NPCs, but actually these NPCs were already there one year ago. It has been one year and they're still buggy as hell and you know, they'll give you a little quest you know, um, put some zombie out of the misery, whatever, you can get some, one, y you used to get uh, infinite items out of them, now you can only get one item, because if you have gotten an item, they just tell you to, you know, to get lost, so you, you, know, uh, you know, give me some equipment, I'll try to persuade you, Oop, they give me something, which I can't use by the way, and then if you ask more, then they will just tell you, you know, you just ask me some stuff, ask again later. So this has changed, but other than that, not much changed. Another thing that has obviously changed is the, uh, the evac shelter itself. So you have some... Um, if you look at this, there are some lockers in there, which is pretty handy. Some benches, you know, and then the layout has changed a bit. Um, these lockers are actually <laughs> surprisingly useful because you can get a pipe out of them. Uh, a pipe can be turned into a, um, what's it called? Um, in a tool to, to break into buildings. Um, But you need level one mechanics, and you s uh, you know I start the game with uh, zero skill level in mechanics, so I can't use it right now. But once I find a book uh, that increases my mechanic skill, I will immediately make a crowbar. Yeah, that's that's it, a crowbar, which is an incredibly useful item, and it's also a reasonably good weapon. Uh, in terms of the game strategy, not much has changed. You go into town, you try to survive, try to find items, try to find weapons, and you try to make uh, as little noise as you could possibly uh, get away with. So, um, military um, surplus is very good, sporting goods store, of course, weapons are good. Um, and by the way, the quest is here, so um, so the first thing that we need is is storage space. Uh, there are a few things that you can use for that: uh, backpacks, um, uh, stuff like a trench coat or a utility vest, uh, army pants, uh, cargo pants. I think is the other one. And you get these from um, military surplus, from clothing um, stores, from sporting goods store. All good options. So we'll just go there. Once we have a backpack, we want to have either a weapon and or a car. Vehicles are actually really, really good because they allow you to travel really fast. And speed, of course, is everything. If you want to survive, if you want to get away, if you want to escape, speed is what you're looking for. Wasps. 
that's really bad. Another new feature is the fact that you can move around the view. That did not exist before. So this does not consume any game terms. I'm just gonna scroll down and see you know, where is this wasp. There it is. But this is a very you know clunky system. You have to manually scroll up and down. I don't. I think that there is no key right now that centers um, the game. Let's have a look. And something is happening with my um, keymon. You know the the program that I use to display the key presses. Apparently, it's buggy right now. So I'll need to have a look at that. Um, uh, there is also the the options. So if you press, um, well, let me go back for a moment. If you press question mark, then you go into the options menu, and then you can actually get a list of all options and all commands. Um, this is interesting. I changed a few things here, but if you want to cheat or make the game easier or harder, you can change the number of initial points. So that allows you to get more stat points, which kind of makes the game a little bit easier. Which might be, you know, some people might find that interesting. Also, the thing that I like to change is skill rust because I just, you know, there is absolutely no fun in having to read like 20 different books just to get some skill levels and then you just lose them because you don't use them. No, I don't want that, so I have my skill uh, loss, uh, the skill rust kept at skill levels. So I will never ever lose a level. If I have level 7 firearms or whatever, it will never be lower than that. Um, so let's see if we can have um, these view commands. Oh, yeah. So capital G center view. So it turns out that you can actually, yeah, and it works. So you can center the view, which is great. Um, safe mode, let's add the monster. Another wasp, let's add that too. Let's see how that goes. And another one. Jesus. Fucking wasps. Rabbits, squirrels, the usual stuff. It's now 8.30, I believe the zombies start appearing at around 8.30 or 9.30, I'm not certain. I think it's 8.30. So you have this little time at the beginning of the game where you can just run around without having any trouble at all. But it's only a short period. Also a thing that has changed a bit since, you know, a year ago is the experience system. It was already uh, in place in some form or another. But you know, at the current moment, you start with no experience, and there is an XP cap of 800. Now, what does that mean? Um, that means that sh um, if I would do stuff right now, it would consume this experience, and I would gain skills in return for that experience. But if I don't have any experience, if my experience becomes zero, then I won't get any. Um, If I have no experience, then I cannot gain any skills, no matter what I do. So even if I kill a billion zombies, I will not gain anything in terms of uh, skills. So we find ourselves a backpack, which is great, and some binoculars, which is even better. So that's pretty awesome. I'm just going to loot this stuff, um, see what else we can get here. Army helmet, clean water, clean water. Yeah, let's just get that. Um, actually, um, that's another great option, I think, is that if I consume something like a chocolate bar, it automatically drops the, the wrapper. And this option, if you go to question mark and then a list of all options, you can here find, let's see, um, drop empty containers. And what that does is you can choose, you know, drop everything except watertight containers so you know it will drop cans and it will drop paper wrappers and all that stuff uh, food is not a problem I'm gonna get that water though go down here see what we can get uh, trappings 
sort of important, but not that important. Yes, okay, we have about... how much water do we have? Five, yeah, okay, that's plenty. You know, chocolate is good. We enjoy the chocolate bar. And now we enjoy it even more. And that's good, because morale is really good. Well, you know, let me first explain why binoculars are really good. Because they allow you to want to um, to see much further. And that's very important for exploration. So on the world map, you will discover much more terrain if you have binoculars. So you should just always carry them around. Now morale is still the same as it used to be. It increases your experience gain. Um, if you have really high morale, you gain about one experience per turn. At, you know, right now I will not gain one experience per turn. It would be much less than that. Uh, there is a formula for it somewhere on the wiki, I think. But um, yeah, here are some garages. There might be a w uh, vehicle in those garages, but I found that the chance to find a vehicle in a garage is actually surprisingly small. You have a better chance to uh, find one in a parking uh, lot. But so far we don't have any luck because we haven't seen any parking lots. Ooh, a hardware store. Let's see if we can get a hatchet. Or maybe a... Well, you know, we can always use some some uh, flashlight. A crowbar. That's a crowbar is a good weapon, but it's also, as I said, incredibly useful to for breaking into um, buildings and stuff. So I won't be needing that pipe. And is a pipe a good weapon? Let's see. Mm, well, it's an ok it's you know it's better than nothing, but I don't need it right now. A, p a pipe is also useful. Didn't I drop it? A pipe is also very useful to make a silencer, but to make a silencer you need to... So you know what, I'm just gonna drag it around for now. I'll drop it when I have to. Welders are also very good. Uh, you need a welder to uh, change your car or your vehicle into something better, or to change it, whatever, or to repair it. So, um, But we'll find plenty of those later, so it's not a problem. Driving skill to one, well, maybe that could be useful. Uh, construction is not very important right now. Uh, cooking isn't either. So, well, we got the important stuff. Um, hmm, pharmacies, obviously very, very good. So let's go there, you know, let's go to this pharmacy, because there's a clothing store nearby, we might get a utility vest, we might get some cargo pants, and we might find some Adderall, or uh, some painkillers, which are obviously incredibly useful. Painkillers is definitely something that you need, if for whatever reason you get, uh, you get some damage, and, and you get slowed down as you experience more pain, you just take a painkiller and it will it might save your ass but painkillers also slow you down just a little bit mp3 player this will increase our morale so let's let's grab it and let's uh, let's use it and this will also slightly increase our energy drinks uh, are somewhat useful mm. not so good painkillers No, not so. This is actually not useful. So let's get the hell out of here. But energy drinks, they slightly increase your speed, and that might just be enough. And here's the parking lot, so that's excellent. Uh, the increase from uh, the speed increase from uh, energy drink, let's see how much it is. I'm not sure. You know, it's. Um, how much does it give me? Well, 8% speed. And uh, I... Ooh, some uh, interesting things right here. Purifier. Sniper conversion. Haha, <laughs> interesting. Well, let's just... This might not be so smart, but let's just... Look, we have a nice little friend. A blobby friend. 
you know, let's loot these corpses. Uh, let's find ourselves some. Um, oh my God. <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Electronic skill to ten. You know, excellent. We'll have plenty to read. This is good. I could get uh, batteries from these soldering irons, but whatever. I'm not gonna bother with that. Let's get these science cards. Might be useful later. We only need one for each lab, so we probably don't need all of these. But whatever, you know. Let's just loot the shit out of them. Let's loot them while we can. These are somewhat useful uh, books, I don't know if I should be, um, you know, I could always get them later, but what the hell, let's see how it goes. Cargo pants, that's something I need. Um, yeah, just the cargo pants, that's the only thing. Oh yeah, and that stupid scarf I got, yeah, it's made of wool. And I'm allergic to wool, it's one of the negative traits that I chose. But there's no real downside, it's just, you know, you, you can't wear a scarf, you have to look for a banana, but you'll find one eventually. Nothing special. Okay, so let's get out again. I think, you know, the only thing, oh, by the way, I should still drop this crappy items. The only thing that I'm missing right now in terms of clothing is a utility vest. So I have some pants, I have a backpack. Um, I actually have a helmet too, which is kind of great. And sneakers are okay boots because they actually increase running speed, which is pretty damn good. I could break into the pawn shop just to have a little look. You know why not? Trench coat. Trench coats are okay items because they also increase um, the volume that you can wear to some extent. So they're okay items, but they're not like super. This is the renaming function. If you press um, the equal key, then you can uh, reassign an item to a key. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just for convenience sake, I'm going to uh, make the crowbar the A button, and then if I press A twice, then I can just apply the crowbar somewhere, and you know, I think that's convenient. So um, let's see if we're lucky. Let's see. Let's let's see if we can find something in the parking lot. But just because we can, we're gonna try and get a hatchet from the hardware store and we're gonna see if we can find some guns because I got a feeling that we're gonna see our first zombie pretty soon because it might just be 9.30 not 8.30 but at 9.30 perhaps they start to appear which is going to be like any moment now so we have a very convenient back entry um, under the hood is actually kind of something that we might want because we need to increase our mechanic skill if we want to um, create certain items or if we want to um, work on our little vehicle improve the vehicle which is kind of good a hexaw is something that we're going to need at some point later too but again this is not a priority always get that later but no hatchets hatchets are kind of uh, uh, good tools you can use it to cut down trees but also to to uh, destroy certain uh, buildings a kinetic bullet puller is going to allow you to create more ammunition when you need it. which is probably good at some point in the game if you have a lot of empty shells that you can uh, lots of flashlights. A Ruger Mini 14. So let's see if we can find some ammo for that gun. Or Nothing. 
nothing too amazing here. Another flashlight. Let's just let's just get the the batteries out of that so that we have at least some reserve batteries, and then let's just uh, get the savage, which isn't you know, not the most quiet weapon, so maybe not the best choice. But I like it, you know, the, the savage, especially you know, with the um, the sniper conversion kit uh, is pretty amazing, you know. Decreases ammo capacity, but that's not going to change anything on the savage because it has only three ammo. Removes any automatic fire capabilities, whatever, <laughs> you know. The savage doesn't do that, you know. It's it's already a kind of a sniper weapon, uh, but it increases accuracy and damage. Accuracy plus ten, ten damage plus eight. You know, it's it's just. It's just amazing. This is going to be, if I can survive, this is going to be pretty good. But I need to have uh, a silencer on it, and I need to have a different weapon because the savage is just—it's the kind of rifle that you use to kill stuff from a long distance that has heavy armor, because you can pretty much kill anything with it. But you don't want to use it for just regular green zombies because that would be well an incredible waste of ammunition first of all and you know much too noisy it's just not necessary you could use like the weakest gun in the game that makes the least noise ooh look we yeah. <laughs> oh gee bicycle great yeah that's not that good that kind of sucks so you don't need to have uh, you don't you, sh you really shouldn't use a savage for just normal zombies it's a huge waste So the thing I need to do is I need to get you know visit more. I really need a vehicle though, you know. I really need a vehicle, and I could use a utility vest. So let's go here. Let's go to the clothing store. Let's go to the parking lot and let's uh, let's use our cool bike. Okay, this is another interesting uh, feature that is the vehicle menu. If you press the dollar sign, you can go into cruise control. I have a bike with cruise control and you can disable it. You can also put your headlights on and stuff like that. So that's the dollar sign menu. Uh, very good. So cruise... <laughs> oh my god. I'm already going too fast on my bike. You know, if, if it becomes yellow, that's kind of the not safe speed. Bad stuff can happen apparently if you d if you don't use the safe speed. If you... Um, if I were to... Um, exit my vehicle and examine it um, yeah examine the vehicle I would see you know the top speed apparently <laughs> you can go up to uh, 64 kilometers per hour on a bike yeah good luck with that I don't know how you're gonna do that but if you maybe if you pedal like really really hard but the safe speed is only 15 kilometers per hour which is just bloody weak this is probably the worst vehicle that you could possibly find but you know, let's uh, let's see. I wonder how much noise these these things make because it's not very obvious. Uh, it's pretty obvious that the stronger the engine of your uh, vehicle, the more noise it's going to make. And there are basically like um, three or four uh, combustion engines, and the weakest is like 100 cc. Then you have like one liter, 2.5 liters, and six liter. The six liter one is pretty noisy, but it's also you know pretty amazing. You can go really fast and you can die really fast by just crashing into stuff by having this uncontrollable awesome speed and just crashing into everything and just killing yourself but it's you know it's great fun. look another bike, lucky me, and we're going at an amazing you know uh, it's pretty good you know. I'm going pretty fast for a bike. Mm. I guess the bicycle isn't that good. You just have to like push it to the limit. And this must be tiring, you know. My character must be getting like really tired. But he's just giving it his all, you know, trying. Look, zombie, pedal, boy, pedal. Mm -hmm. Let's use the look command to just, you know, I don't have to go there. I can just 
use my binoculars. Okay, that's sad, you know. We did not find a useful car. And I'm already being chased by zombies, so... I might find some air army pants in the military surplus, I, I might find a utility vest in the clothing store, but then again I might not. And what I really need is a vehicle and weapons. So, um, hmm. let's just follow this road and see where it goes. Let's go check out the garage. Two garages, a subway station, um, you know, and another parking lot. We might get lucky, let's see. The thing with the cars is like, oh god, this is gonna hurt. Let's slow down a bit. So, this is why, you know, if you disable cruise control, you get more control over your car, or in this case, your awesome bike. It's because I yeah. Which allows you to navigate like hard things like this. Oh god. Yeah. But apparently you need to enable cruise control with a bike. <laughs> Strange. I think this bike is kind of buggy because if you don't use cruise control apparently you can't really accelerate. You just move one one uh, one tile at a time, which is really strange. Oh, but hell, you know, let's just go to the garage. Ooh, almost crashed into the fence. Um, these garages are actually a bit strange because if oh my oh my god, just look at the zombies. Maybe it's my bike that's making too much noise. Let's do the bike. So it doesn't look like... Yeah, no longer. Can we still get on our bike to escape the zombies? Yes, we can. Um, dude. Go. Go, man. Oh god. Bikes apparently have poor acceleration. Who could have thought that? So let's just go... Maybe do this garage gun store thing and then hope we find something to save our ass from all these zombies. The thing is if you just run away far enough they will just despawn or something, I don't know uh, exactly how it works, but they like, you know, if you leave an area, it goes away, but then every zombie that leaves an area also increases the spawn counter somewhere or something, I don't know. Strange things happen in zombie land. Check it out. You know, I think the chance of finding something in this garage are pretty slim. So I might just as well ignore it and go straight to the weapon store. Uh, mega store. This kind, these mega stores are sort of new. I think I'm not sure. I think they were not in the. Um, so again, you know, I'm gonna disable cruise control. <laughs> I think it's better if I turn now. Then I can escape when the zombies come. So please give me, yeah, give me a silly little weapon like that. That's exactly what I need. 
So now we have a weapon that's actually not, not too noisy. So at least we can shoot something if we want to. But it's best that we just avoid it for now. Because we don't, you know, we're not gonna get any experience from it. <laughs> These are okay handguns, but I prefer the rifle. But this this FN57 is actually that's that's you know a funky weapon if you can find some ammo for it. Uh, it has some decent armor penetration, so there you know if you find ammunition, you immediately have 100 of it. I'm not sure how much noise this makes, so I you know I, I can't really tell much say much about it, but you know it's okay. You know it's a decent handgun. It doesn't do too much damage, but it does have this nice armor penetration, which allows you to kill certain things that you might not be able to kill with one of these uh, uh, Smiths and Weston 22A or Sig Mosquito or whatever. So if you look at the point .22 uh, LR uh, ammunition, it has zero armor pierce and 11 damage. However, these uh, special ammunition has 30 armor pierce, you know, and 14 damage. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for just a simple handgun. Oh shit! Zombies. It's time to turn on my cruise control. Oh god. Faster. So, you know, I got everything that I want to get from the weapon stores. I have the basic uh, ammunition that I need. I could always use more of it, but for now we have what we want. So let's have a little recap, you know, we started, you know, out here in the woods, which is an okay shelter, you know, this is definitely, if I wanted to make a hideout, this would be okay. I have some food nearby, because I could always raid the beehives, of course ants are much better than bees, but, you know, also if you want to train some weapon skills, beehives, excellent. You could just shoot at a wall, but why shoot at a wall if you could shoot some bees? Um, there isn't, you know, you need to find a lab to find a lot of water, which would be quite useful. So it's, you know, I'll, I'll have to explore the area around this hideout, this evac shelter. It might just be the perfect hideout, let's see. So we found ourselves a backpack, we found ourselves um, an awesome bike, and some weapons. And we uh, we discovered uh, a lot of the village, so it's pretty large, and you know it will definitely have all the things that I need probably to get this uh, check just started. If we take a look at the inventory, you know we f we find a bionics, you know, pretty amazing. Uh, what does this one do? Let's have a look. Um, hmm. You know, at the moment this is not going to be useful because you need to have at least um, a power system. You know, you need to have energy. Without energy, you can't do anything. But you know, this thermal dissipation system, if I can power it, you know, I could just probably stand in a fire or something. I'm not sure. I never really tried it, but. You know, maybe not the best bionic, but I think it's pretty cool that I found one, regardless whether it's an, a good one or not. <laughs> you know, finding a bionic at the start of, of your uh, game, you know, it's pretty cool. We have, you know, two very good weapons. The weakest weapon in the game, which is very useful for just ordinary zombies, but also a very powerful rifle, you know, the Savage 100 and 11F. It's my favorite weapon. It's just absolutely my favorite. And on top of that, we j we find a sniper conversion kit, which is perfect for the savage. We even have first aid, we have water, we don't have any food, but we have bees. And we have, you know, we even have some books, binoculars. Pretty good, <laughs> pretty good start.
a military bunker you know that's the difference you know the military bunker is the same thing that we had one year ago and the military outpost you know that's that's the new thing oh and one thing that we don't have is drugs we still need to have the right uh, drugs we didn't find that